Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. I'm super excited. We have a first time guest here. We have Rosie Westcott here, and you're going to learn about making bank at the vault salon. Just wait. I just want you to wait and hear like how this all plays out at their salon and how successful her team is. And they are a top 200 salon throughout North America. So really good things to come. Before I bring Rosie to the mic, a couple things. I want to first tell you that if you are listening to today's episode, you can also watch today's episode on Beyond the Technique's YouTube page. Go to Beyond the Technique on YouTube and click subscribe while you're there. You'll get notified every time a new video podcast or education launches. And you can actually see the faces behind the names of our podcast guests. All right. Well, we got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Meet Your Stylist. Without our sponsors, we could not do what we do here at Beyond the Technique. Thank you, Meet Your Stylist. What the heck is Meet Your Stylist? Well, you have this amazing website and you put time and energy into that website. So when new people visit, they choose you. They say, wow, out of all the Google searches that I've done, I want to come to this salon. Well, how do you really engage with that client, capture their information, and connect them with the top stylists at your salon that are the best fit for them. This is Meet Your Stylist. Meet Your Stylist is a fun, easy, accurate matchmaking quiz that will connect those future guests with their top three stylists at your salon based on behavioral economics. What does that mean? It's like the e-harmony of hair salons. This goes deeper than just what services they're looking to get done. It's about who they are and who your stylists are. That's why there's nothing like it and hundreds of salons are joining Meet Your Styles throughout North America. We want you to be one of them. Go to meetyourstylist.com to get started. Alrighty, Miss Rosie Westcott. What a great name. That's like a stage. Rosie Westcott is here and she is the owner and founder of The Vault Salon. Uh, she has been in the beauty industry for over 20 years and loves it more and more every day. Her goal for Vault Salon is to create an environment that is welcoming ex and exceptional for all guests and her team. Her passion is to continue to elevate the beauty experience for her customers, as well as grow the next generation of stylists to be the very best that they can be. And that includes helping them make bank. That's not all about how the Vault Salon name came to fruition, but it's part of it. And you're going to learn more about that today. So without further ado, Help me welcome Miss Rosie Westcott. Welcome to Beyond the Technique. Hi, Katie. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Ah, the pleasure is ours. And congratulations on your honor of Top 200 Salon this year. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be a part of it. It's a lot of work, but it's fun to be a part of it. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, we want to get to know you, Rosie. You've been in the industry for quite some time, but how did it all begin for you? My early beginnings, um, I actually started out um, going to LA and I did TV and film for a minute um, and I enjoyed it and I loved it. Um, then I had, my mom actually had some health concerns. So I moved back home to be closer to her. And during that time, I decided to go to beauty school because believe it or not, in TV and film, you don't need a license to do that. Um, so I went back to school and got my license and started working behind the chair. I worked for commission salons and I did well there. Um, unfortunately, I felt like I kept out at the salon that I worked at. So I did go rent and I rented for a while. I did the sweet life. And from all of that, I found everything that I didn't want to do um, and made a lot of mistakes the hard way. And so from there, I was like, I want to make better. I want to make better for the new styles out there so they don't have to make the mistakes that I did and create a better experience for not only guests, but for stylists as well. I wanted to I was tired of seeing so many fail um, and I came close to failing myself, but how can we create something a little bit better so that people are, you know, financially taken care of and, you know, their books are taken care of and they don't have to be the independent owner if they don't want to, and they can still make a good amount of money. So that's where I founded the vault. Well, it's incredible. And, and when you share, like, I almost failed myself, what does that mean, Rosie? Um, so when I first left my commission salon, um, I went to a rental salon and it was an open concept salon. And that's where I learned, um, discounting myself. I never had discounted myself till I went there. I learned to do package bundles and discount. And that's because I was looking at the stylist older than me that, oh, well, that this is what they do. Okay. So I should be doing this too. 
Um, and I wasn't thinking from an owner's mindset. I was thinking I was still a stylist. And the fact of the matter is, is when you go out to rent, you do own your business. And I think that was a misconception that I personally had going out on my own. Um, so yeah, that's where, you know, I started discounting myself versus realizing my value. And I was working harder, not smarter. Mm. Well, it's quite a leap to go from being a part of a team to doing the sweet life than to opening your own salon. You wanted better for everybody, including yourself. What were some of the things that you implemented right off the bat that created the kind of environment and culture that you wanted? Um, my biggest thing was the reason I left my commission salon was capping out. So I immediately with, I am a quote unquote commission salon. Um, I created levels and within those levels, we currently have five levels, but I've always said that I'm willing to have more because I never want somebody to feel like they have earned the max that they can earn. If we hit those goals of, you know, retention, our KPIs and everything like that, I want them to be able to feel like they can still level up more um, and always be a part of something bigger than just themselves. That's amazing. And how long did, before you opened your second salon, like how long have you, had you been at it before you're yeah. like, oh, we got to go for number two here. So yeah, um, we had, were open four and a half years when we went for salon number two, our five-year anniversary is coming up here actually, um, May. So we had our five-year anniversary in May. And so then, okay. um, yeah, so we have two salons, even after a pandemic, um, kind of crazy to think, but I think you have to have a little bit of crazy to, um, risk versus reward. You have to be crazy to do some good things in life. So yeah, absolutely. Well, and with all the good that has come with owning a salon, what has been some of kind of your major obstacles that you faced? Um, I think it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know until it's faced in you. Um, I think the biggest obstacle as a salon owner is a lot of times you feel lonely of like, where do you go? How do you fix this? And I think the biggest thing that I learned was surrounding myself with other salon owners and not looking at it as a competition as much as a camaraderie and learning from each other. Um, kind of like what you're doing here is a great thing of being able to learn from each other so that you can grow and get over those obstacles. Yep. So true. Yeah. Okay. Well, how did you come up with your name, the vault salon? So, um, I went to, you know, of course, like we always do. And one of the statistics is 90% of people when they first go to a salon feel nervous or anxious about getting their hair done by somebody new. So the vault actually represents being safe and secure, um, just naturally by itself. So kind of that underlying thing. And then as far as aesthetics, I wanted to create a community that, um, it didn't matter if you're male or female, you would feel welcomed in. It wasn't just all, you know, flowers and frou-frou. I wanted it to be very gender neutral so that anybody felt comfortable coming in. Um, so yeah, really more of that comfort. And like I said, that safe and security of the vault underlying. Well, and you have a heart for helping your team make bank. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was the other side of it is yes. I wanted not only for the guests, but for the stylist to come in and be like, it's a bank fall. Like I can make some bank here. So I wanted them to not only make bank for the daily, but also help them grow their retirements and their savings so that they can retire from this industry and not just be behind the chair their whole life. Which I feel like Rosie, you have a unique perspective having done both, you know, the team environment and then being an independent contractor to then opening a salon and creating the team. Cause you could have opened a salon and had like chair rentals, right. But you chose the team dynamic the commission you know, structure. So how, how do you help your stylist make bank? So we have mentorship. Um, you know, we do one-on-one -on -one meetings with them every month. Um, anything that they're struggling on, I'm there to help guide them. Um, and we have a team and atmosphere in general of nobody's alone. Like, you know, I remember in the sweet life, you know, you have a question about it. Sometimes you just want to ask somebody, just, you want to talk to somebody. And we have that team environment where you can be like, Hey, what do you think about this? And no client ever feels like weird about it. It's just this really nice family team atmosphere. And like I said, with coaching them of showing them the path, I, one of my favorite stories is one of my lead stylists. Um, she always says, if you don't want to do just ask Rosie, she'll tell you like, so she went from a level one to a level four. She's now making W2 to over a hundred thousand dollars a year in our salon. And she did that within a year. She went from level one to level four 
in one year and is killing the game. And so she is the proof in the pudding. She came from a rental salon, came to us and you know, that's my goal for all of them. And so I, it's really keeping you on track, keeping you accountable, keeping you, you know, ready. And then once you see the numbers grow, it's a win-win for everybody. I, this is like unheard of that yeah. a stylist goes from a level one to a level four in one, one year. year and zero to six figures in one year. So Okay. I know owners are going to be wondering, well, how often are they eligible for that promotion? Do you do monthly, quarterly? Quarterly. So yeah, every three months. And so every three months, like if you are hitting those numbers, we have a code of honor, core values. We expect you to abide by, like, are you being kind to not only yourself, but to your guests and your teammates? Um, And then we also have our KPIs of, you know, your service revenue, your retail revenue, your retention. Um, We also like to look at your Instagram, your social media. Are you promoting yourself as well? And then if you're hitting all of our goals in three months consistently, you get to level up. And so she just, she was one that she was like, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? And yeah, the hardest thing for her, and I think it is hard for any stylist is knowing her value of, you know, going from a one to a four and some of your clients paying double what they did when they first started with you. And she was always so scared about that. And I was just behind her going, it's okay that you, it's okay to lose some. Cause you're going to gain those that don't know and don't care. And so she has retained, you know, some of her clients that believe and love her and know her value. And then she's gain some new ones who, like I said, don't, didn't know and didn't care what she was charging before. So yeah, it's worked out. I think it's incredible that you don't have the boundaries or restrictions in place that they have to wait longer to give somebody the opportunity to move up every three months. I would say everything in in that sounds incredible, except the one challenge I might imagine is the conversation with clients. How do you go about communicating uh, with let's say Karen, I shouldn't use yeah. the name Karen, but fine. We'll call her Karen. Karen, I know that you paid $30 last week and this week it's 45. And then the next time, Hey, Karen, I know you paid 45 last time. How do you go about really working on, um, not convincing, but just giving your stylist confidence to have that conversation? Um, and, and that is a hard one. Thank you for asking that. Um, cause And that's where I love to put this mind frame into perspective for everyone of, we have that one Karen and we have a hundred amazing people who are excited for you and value you and see the, like, we always say, thank you so much for the promotion. You know, like when a guest gets a promotion, like, oh my gosh, we're so excited for them. We are their biggest cheerleader for our guests. And it's sometimes, why is that not happening for us? And so what I really remind my staff is you are going to get that one out of a hundred it's really not going to be the big thing, but how do you address that person? You can just say, what we do is thank you so much for sharing that with me. And I understand if there is um, a beauty budget in mind that you have. And so what we do, because we have that team atmosphere is thank you for sharing that with me. And I have a great colleague over here. She just started with us. She's a level one. I trained her personally because she's now an educator. So she trains the next one and she goes, and I think she's going to be a perfect match for you. So we pass that guest on to the next person, because as we level up, we do know that some people have that beauty budget that you're not going to be able to fit. And you, the good news is that you've trained that next one and they've already shampooed their hair. They've already blow dried for them. They've already met them, interacted Built with them. I tell my associates all the time, your goal is to be their best friend because eventually they're going to come to you. And I want them to come to you. I want them to create that bond with them. So again, that family atmosphere, if it's not a competition of they're my guests, they're our guest, And I want them to be able to be and yeah, so we pass them on to the lower level and they're able to stay within the salon. I can stop over. They can stop over, have a cup of coffee with them and say hi. And then they still get their value of their service with the lower level. So that's how we do it. Wonderful, Rosie. Okay. So tell us about Vault Salon. Where are you located? Tell us about your, your teams at each location. Yeah, so we have um, Roseville in Rockland. We are in California. We are outskirts of Sacramento. Um, So we have our original, which is in Rockland, California. And then we just opened our second one in Roseville. They are um, very similar areas. They are right next to each other, town by town. Um, As far as our teams, we have a wide variety of teams. Like I love to compare Vault kind of like 
to Victoria's Secret, how Victoria's Secret has pink as its underlying. So we have vault salons, we have a huge um, demographic. So we have, you know, your power blondes, we have your vivid colors, we have your stay at home moms, we have your corporate moms, you have, you know, we have the men that come in too, you know, so like, we really have a wide variety of guests that come in and we have, what we try to do is when we bring in any of our styles straight out of school, we bring them in and we ask them, we go through a little training process with them of who's your ideal guest? What do you want to do day in and day out? And we try to create specialties for them right out the gate. So that way you're not advertising to the masses. You're really dialing in on who do you want to work with? What do you want to do? What makes your heart happy? And then that way we can make sure that that's happening in their chair on the daily. And then they can grow that specialty. Very cool. And I noticed, you know, we, we had this, um, mastermind a couple months ago on the great pricing debate. And, and for you and your brand, you do do um, pricing a little bit different than mm -hmm. the name of the service and what that service costs. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your pricing structure. So yeah, we um, do parts and labor. We um, charge hourly. So everything is based on time. And that was definitely a big swallow to do when we changed over because we used to charge, you know, the premium highlight, the partial highlight, the, you know, the women's haircut, men's haircut, which that became a thing for California a long time ago. You can no longer charge by gender. So how do you charge? So we literally went to it. It's by time. How long does it take? And that being said, we round up. So we charge by every 15 minutes, 15 minute intervals, and then we round up. So if it's like, an hour and 20 minutes, you're gonna be charged the hour and a half price, not the hour 15. Um, that being said, you know, obviously if half five of those minutes was me chatting to you, like we can bring that <laughs> back to the hour 15, but we definitely charge by the hour. Um, and then for our color costs, we, we use salon scale and we um, charge the color goes to the client as well. So for some guests, they ended up paying more. And for some guests, they ended up paying less. So, and those were the hardest conversations to have was when we flipped over to that. Um, but it makes sense at the end of the day, like a partial highlight for somebody that has four hairs and a partial highlight for somebody that has hair down to their butt, the value of your time. And that's where you really have to understand that it's your time involved. It's not the service itself. It's the time involved. And so um, most people understand it. And we had, we didn't really have any kickback on it. Like once you explained it, people were like, yeah, no, that makes sense. And rather than nickel and diming all these like extra charges of like, oh, extra length, extra color, extra, like, it's just very black and white and clean. Yeah. So how long did it take for you once you made that change for that to kind of just settle and become the new normal for you? I would say the first month was more, again, the doubts of the staff and everything of not that they were doubting it, but this, the scared, the little, little voice inside going, oh my God going to accept this. <laughs> um, but within a month, it was fine. And even when we have guests calling in now, because it is a new concept, there's guests that call in, they've never heard of this, like, wait, so you charge by time and we explain it. Yeah. It's however long it takes for you. So it's customized to you. It's it's, it's for you. And when they hear that, they go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and that's really how the conversation goes. And it's just really, again, you have to make that connection with the guests and talk to them, you know, talk it, talk it through with them. And once they feel heard and you, they are understanding and understand and explained, they get it. It's fine. Yeah. And I, I noticed that you kind of specialize in weddings and extensions as well. So you have a lot of really cool concepts. What do you think are, are other unique from an operational perspective, things that you're doing that really set your salon apart, or you think is probably the more progressive right now? Honestly, the time charging was the most progressive for us um, because that even goes into extensions of how long does it take? Um, and that being said, for some of our extension applications, so our application price for extensions is actually double our hourly because it's a luxury service. And you can do the same thing with keratins or anything that's considered a more luxury service. We charge a different hourly rate for. And so then that way you can really create that value around those services. Um, weddings, again, they're basically double our hourly charge as well, because it is a more, um, luxury service. And especially if you're going on site, that's definitely, um, you know, a convenience factor for the guests. So that's what we do. So that's where you can really make more is by creating those luxury services within your price point. So, yeah. Cool. Well, it, we're, you know, almost halfway through 2022, what are some of your major goals for your salon this year? 
Right now, my goals for this year is really focusing on the team and the culture. Um, you know, we're not um, excluded from, you know, the great resignation that's happened throughout salon industry. And so my thing is just really focusing on the team and making sure that they're happy, not only financially, but I sometimes think that we are so number driven as owners that we forget about the emotional side. So my goal is really to help heal everyone emotionally this year. Um, 2020 was hit us. You know, we were closed um, half the year of 2020. We're in California. We were closed half the year of 2020. 2021, it was almost like survival mode of like, get everybody in that we could. And then it was like 2022. It's like, we all went, and now it's like, let's really focus on ourselves and like our emotions. Cause the better we are, the better we can serve. So that's, that's really my biggest goal. I mean, financially I have other goals, but <laughs> I want to hit the 1.25 mark. Um, 1.25 million. I want to do that. That's my financial goal. Um, but really how are we going to get there is, you know, making sure everybody's feeling good and that atmosphere has that light to it. So that's really where I'm going to focus. Well, you'll get there because you have the target in front of you. You put it out there. Um, so I think you're going to get there. Definitely. Thank you. Well, as we kind of wind things down, Rosie, what would be some words of wisdom that you'd want to share with owners listening today that have maybe impacted you tremendously as you've gone through starting and persevering through hard times and then really coming out you know, for the better in some of the new things and ways that you're doing business? I would say the biggest thing is as hard because it's hard. It's going to be hard. Um, know that you're not alone and know, reach out to your communities of salon owners and don't be afraid to admit your weaknesses because sometimes our biggest mistakes can be our biggest learns and your like bigger picture is just over that hurdle. So that would be my biggest thing. Cause I know, I don't know any salon owner that's ever been like, Oh yeah, everything's gone really great. So <laughs> I would just say in those times where you're like ready to give up or you're really frustrated or you're sitting in your car crying, reach out to your community and know that you're not alone and that every salon owner has been through it and that there is an answer out there to help you through mm. things like this, things like podcasts, just know that there's answers out there for you. We got to stick together. Yep. It's the only way we're going to get there is the more we get together as owners and collaborate, the better the industry is going to be. Absolutely. I agree. Well, I just appreciate you being here and sharing your journey with us and about vault salon and Thank you. how, how, how you help your stylist. What a, what a, you have a lot of cool things going on, Rosie. So it's, it's awesome that you came here to share all that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us here week after week at Beyond the Technique. You know what? Our goal is to change the way that you are supported in your business. If you love today's episode and you love our podcast, we would appreciate you just taking a moment to quickly leave us a positive review on the listening platform that you choose so that more people like you will discover Beyond the Technique. Until next time, everybody have an awesome day and stay strong.